Quite a while ago, my regular group of D&D players and myself decided to switch over to the Cypher system and continue our fantasy adventures at the table using the Cypher system. And now that I have a few sessions, well, quite a few sessions under my belt as a Game Master for the Cypher system, I'm ready to give you 5 tips that helped improve my game. Hi there fellow Game Masters, my name is Mr. Tarask and this is your go-to YouTube channel for anything Cypher System. I did a 5 minute explainer video on how to play the Cypher System, I did a 5 minute character build on how to make a character for the Cypher System and I even made a 5 minute video explaining to you how to build your own monster as a Game Master. And now I'm ready to give you 5 tips on how to be a better Game Master for the Cypher System. Now, disclaimer alert, these tips are personal to me. These helped my game and improved my game for me but also for my players because every group and every table of players is unique and by that I mean just to sketch my players are a bunch of adults who all, all have a job, are self-employed, are extremely busy and all they want to do once a month is basically sit down at a table, go face first into some very unhealthy food and make stupid decisions for three hours straight. So without further ado, let's get into the first point that helped me improve my game, especially for my players, and that is give more XP. For me, the XP system of uh, the Cypher system is the bread and butter of the system. It is not just a way to accumulate XP as much as you can and then level up and get some new powers. XP is actually a tool and a mechanic in the game to uh, to make the game work better for you. You can use one XP to uh, re-roll a die if you're not ha happy with the outcome. Let's say you're trying to to slap a monster and you know it's probably going to be the final hit but you miss you re-roll using one xp and you might hit you might be able to uh, uh revive a character that you weren't able to revive by spending one xp so xp is very important but also accumulating xp helps you helps your character advance within the leveling system so it's really important for players to get xp especially if you want to give them the feeling of actually being able to do some crazy stuff with their character so for me giving a bit more xp as the uh, main book the cypher system rulebook suggests is absolutely the way to go and there's a few ways that i do that first of all i have a group of players which is five players uh, but most of the time only four show up and then one person can and then the next session other four show up and another person can or whatever everybody who sits down at the table when we start gets one xp that's the thing i do the person who isn't there doesn't get the xp Bad luck for you, but the Cypher system is specially designed for players all to level up or progress their, their characters in a different way. So leveling up at the same time isn't necessary for the Cypher system. So I just give everybody 1 XP when they show up for the game. Now another thing this does is really fun because you sit down with your cup of coffee and everybody's having a chat and all that jazz. And when you feel that's ready to start like the, the, the game, you just go like, oh, by the way, everybody gets an XP. That immediately puts people in the game they immediately are oh shit yeah get an xp and then a lot of them probably will hit 4 xp so they will be able to make a choice between uh, uh progressing their character or maybe just keeping uh, holding on to that for do being able to do a few re-rolls uh during the game other people will hit three and are like oh i need to do something awesome and uh, i need to get like a gm intrusion or whatever to get one one more xp and then i'm able to like tick the other box and get a new power stuff like that it immediately i always notice this players are immediately enthusiastic about the game about the mechanics they're they're they dig into their uh, character sheet and as a bonus you as a dungeon master get a little, little bit of a break before the game even starts now you can take this as far as you want of course for example we've been to a team park a few weeks ago as a group as the same group of people and i just gave everybody one xp because everybody was there and i was just like yeah this is like a session but we're just going in for a roller coaster rides or whatever so here's everybody get one xp another thing that i do is kind of change the rules again and that is when a character rolls a natural one they normally get a gm intrusion and um they don't get an xp they get to spend an xp to ignore the gm intrusion or they get the GM intrusion. What I do is I give people the choice between spending one XP and not getting the GM intrusion or getting one XP and getting the GM intrusion and getting one extra XP to give to another player. This speeds up the progression of the Cypher system 
a lot. Now, all of this might be complete overkill for people who play on a weekly basis, but my group of people only meets on a monthly basis, and I just want them to sit down and be excited about what is about to happen and what their character can do. So giving them a bunch of extra XP really helps that. Tip number two is something I needed to really get used to when I started playing Cypher System as opposed to Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition with my group and that is just name a number. The Cypher System has a mechanic where you can just name a number and that number is the number people need to hit in order to do something. Now that kind of sounds the same as uh, for D&D 5th edition but in reality it's completely different. For example if your player out of the blue decides to attack the innkeeper if that would happen in a fifth edition game you would have you would have to like look into the player handbook and find a stat blog of a an innkeeper or a half orc or whatever or or with an armor class and an attack bonus and all of that jazz in the cypher system all you need is a number you just as a dungeon master go yeah he's kind of a commoner but he's somewhat stronger as a commoner so i'm going to make him level three which means players only need to hit a nine in order to hit him, which means he has nine hit points and that's basically it that is all you need it's the same thing with tasks when your players are doing something out of the blue just name a number in how um, difficult you think it is going to be and for the cypher system that is something I really needed to get used to I needed to get used to how easy it is the first sessions I was like uh, 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 yeah, uh, um, okay you attack the person uh, I need a stat blog and I was looking through books for stat blogs but then I really all I need to do is just like pick a number pick a number between 0 and 10 if it's really weak person you do 1 if it's like a godlike creature you do 10 and 10 times 3 is 30 to hit which is near damn near impossible and that's how simple it is we as game masters especially for other systems are so used to overcomplicating things that we cannot wrap our head around just naming a number so if you ever sit down as a cypher system GM don't look up stat blocks don't go searching for rules how difficult is this and how difficult is that just pick a number tip number three is embrace the chaos just embrace the chaos because the cypher system is designed to do so for example the initiative system of the cypher system is really cool everybody who, who defeats the target number of a monster gets to act before the monster everybody who doesn't defeat the target number of the monster gets to act after the mon monster by that i mean everybody before the monster acts as a group and everybody behind the monster acts as a group at first when i did this to my players and i told them okay guys it's your turn and i just looked at all of my players because they all beat the target number and they were all just sitting there looking at me staring at me like okay whose turn is it and where i was just like it's your turn do whatever you want you all get an action and a movement do whatever you want just tell me what you want to do and at first there was like they were, were really hesitant to kind of um uh be the first one to talk or be the first one to come with an id but after like half a session people started to really embrace it and this is something you as a game master can really help for people to embrace by tying turns together for example last session um two of my players were on a drag encircling an airship trying to defeat the airship and two of my other players decided to jump off onto the airship and then after a while the airship started crashing down now you have a dwarf swinging across the ground hitting crew members and you have another guy doing spells and all of that stuff and they are just beating crew members on the airship but the airship is going down and it's crashing so one of my players told um to, uh, told me like i want to grab uh, the dwarf and then uh, cast levit i want to cast levitate grab the dwarf and jump off the airship uh before it crashes into a mountain peak right and i was like sure do that but then the other player the dwarf she just yelled out stop 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 because it's a cypher system you can embrace the chaos and she actually gets to say um she actually said like no wait since you're dragging me off the ship just let me do another attack. And that is something that cannot happen in 5th edition. In 5th edition, you basically, it's your turn. If you decide to grab her and get out, she gets out without doing an, uh, doing an attack. For the Cypher system, it's completely different. She decided to do one more swing with the cross, crossbeak, uh, kill one of the crew members. They fell overboard with a trail of blood. <laughs> all of that stuff and then the other person grabbed her and made the check and they jumped off of the airship and then in the same turn the other two players were like okay because that happened we just decided to swoop under the other two characters with the dragon and grab them and save their lives which is something that would not be 
happening in 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons if, say, the characters on the dragon act first. If they won the initiative rounds and the person, I don't know, doing the dragon riding wins the initiative rounds and they do something completely else with their turn and then the other people decide to jump off, they're basically fucked. Step number four is something that I only recently discovered when a player of mine contacted me because they wanted to be able to do something that they couldn't find in the book. And tip number four, by that reason, is be involved. For example, one of my players, Sam, contacted me through WhatsApp. He sent me, he sent me a message and he's like, hey man, I want to do some kind of spell from long range, but I'm looking through my things for tier two. I'm now tier two, but I cannot find a damage spell from long range. Like just a basic damage spell from long range uh, comparable with like firebolt in fifth edition firebolt in fifth edition is just a ranged spell attack and if it hits it does damage that's basically what it does it does physical fire damage right so what you as a dungeon master can do is first of all pick up the book and uh, check a cypher system rule book for a power check a god forsaken for a power or whatever team you're playing for a power for them to use what you can also do is just come up with a power for me for example i asked my discord and a big shout out to the best youtuber in the world cat up who knows everything about the cypher system he really helped me out come up with a power but coming up with a power for the cypher system especially one of those powers is also really system fireball for me is just an intellect check that you need to make against the target number of the creature and then if that happens you just do x amount of damage all you need to do is balance out the damage towards the range because if it's shorter range you can have have more damage because the risk is higher if it's longer range it does a little bit less damage and then you just say okay instead of it doing intellect damage it does physical damage and I think this kind of stuff happens more often for people who play a certain team and especially people who have been playing Dungeons and Dragons for years upon years upon years. They're so used to certain spells and spell IDs that they really want to build a character kind of like in Dungeons and Dragons, but for the cipher system. So they're looking through rules and they're looking through powers and they're looking through spells and whatever, and they're not really finding the thing they need to find or they want to find. As a game master, it's super easy in the, in the cipher system to create a new power for a, for a sage or create a new power for an adept or a wizard for in order for them at tier 2 instead of them taking a power from the type list in the cypher system rulebook or godforsaken whatever they can take that type that you created for them now the next GM tip is something that is true for any system you play, but for the Cypher system it's actually very easy to do, it's barely an inconvenience, and that is change the rules. For example, one rule that I changed in my Cypher game is the moment when characters take the other box in their progression uh, thingy on their character sheet. Normally the other box is for things like getting plus two on your uh, healing checks and other stuff, but one of the things says that you can take an extra ability for your tier or below uh, from your focus but you can only do that starting from uh, tier 3. I completely ignore that last part. I tell them like hey if you wanted to take the other box and if you want to take a new power you can do so. You can choose from your type or your focus. Uh, there's probably a reason for the game to do it this way. There's probably balance reasons and all that stuff. But I play tabletop RPGs not per se for the balance. I play them for the pure ridiculous fun they allow at the table. So for me that rule is really important for those players. Who are more into like the character building. And they want as much as different powers as they can get. And different choices. So they really feel like they're building their own character. And at the table in one session they feel like they can do more than just like attack or knock somebody prone they can cast different spells or use different powers so i think starting tier one you can choose something from your type or your focus and now of course the circle is completely around because i started this video saying that i give my players more xp than the book suggests which is basically also changing a rule now i hope some of these uh tips and tricks and gm experiences or whatever i was doing in this video uh, might help you for your game at your table for your players it's still again keep in mind your players are your players they're different people they might be more power gamers they might be um even lazier than my players they might be even more leisurely and casual than my players or somewhere in between it's all okay as long as you're having fun these are just my experience as uh, experiences and my tips and until next video bye bye